Trix Lee here, Editor-in-Chief with GirlGamer.com, but today I am here on behalf of MyOuterspace.com for a very special announcement. Now, for the past month, there's been speculation as to who the governor of Sirius would be. Well, today I am proud to announce that your governor is indeed the creative director of BioWare slash Mythic Entertainment, and he's an all-around good guy, and I'm really, really proud to say this. The governor of Sirius is Paul Barnett. I love the fact it's called Sirius as well, because it's like one of the things that I'm not. Well, it's Sirius, probably not spelled that way, star. is it? Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a creative director for computer games. What does that actually mean? Uh, well, for the people out there wondering if they can become a creative director, um, I'm dyslexic, I'm colorblind, I'm deaf at the higher ra uh, hearing range, and I was told I was stupid most of my life. Uh, but what I discovered is that uh, I, had, I, I discovered a love affair, a love affair with computer games when I was very little. When the internet was powered on coal, and all games consisted of nothing but squares fighting triangles that shot dots, I entered this sort of secondary imagination world, and I spent all my time being told by my mother to go out in the sun with oh, the rest of the kids. Silly. Go Wasting outside. your time. <laughs> Why can't you go out there? And, and, and I spent it in my bedroom instead, living this crazy world. And I became obsessed about computer games. And I read about them. And the internet back then, analog internet, it was magazines. The forums that I went to was the schoolyard. And like the, the websites that I went to were the news agents. And I obsessed about them, and they became like my muse. And I never thought that I'd actually get to make them. Um, and so instead, I ended up playing around with card games and board games and the rest of it. But as, as time went on, I ended up with this sort of obsession that I couldn't get rid of. The trouble was, I'm completely talentless. I can't code, I can't draw, I can't <laughs> write very well, I can't really do very much. Very, very, and so you sat there, miserable. It's like being really into music, but having no musical talent. talent. And you go, what can I possibly do? But what I discovered was, I had energy and passion and imagination. And I'd spent a lot of time, like, playing everything I could find. And then a miracle happened. The internet happened. <laughs> oh no, you say that, but it was marvelous. And by sheer force of will, I thought, oh, I'm just gonna make a game on the internet then. And I made what is now referred to as an online game, but for me was referred to as the waste of time. You're throwing away your life. What are you doing game? And it did very well. And, and I went off and I, I had a really great time about it. And I made lots of games and I helped out with lots. And I met lots of really interesting people. And then I discovered that people were willing to let me hang around. And they were willing to let me hang around, and it was nothing to do with whether I could code, because I can't. It was nothing to do with whether I could draw, because I can't. Or whether I could write documents, because I can't do that. No, they kept me around for, for very particular things. They liked the fact that there was communication, there was energy and passion, there was drive, there was dedication. But most of all, they realized that I do have a genuine love affair with the making of games. And that, that getting other people enthused and focused and enjoying it, able to see the wonder in their eyes when they make something, allowed us to get people to do the improbable with the impossible. So, you know, pretty exciting. Stuff. I'm assuming that you and I are around the same age where computers were still like, you got the choice of an orange screen or a green screen. And it was things like old school Wolfenstein and old school Oregon Trail. You know, so... Wow, Oregon Trail. I know, um, right? So, I think that... that <laughs> I think that people, people and their love affair of computer games is interesting. Um, it, it's sort of like they have a golden period. And your golden period is the bit where you don't have a job and you don't have to worry about paying bills and you can just obsess over computer games completely disproportionately. My golden period is from Empire Strikes Back to Say Anything. In between those two movies, oh, wow. I played everything you could possibly play that I could actually legally get my hands on and illegally copy in, in, in the schoolyard. Um, and during that time, I learned all my computer game love. And thus, it's the only period that actually matters. It's the only period of games where they were great. Everything else is clearly useless. Everything else is just a rehash of that. And what I had to come to terms with um, in my job is that every other person in the world has their own unique golden period. Right. And their golden period is as justified as anything I've got. And so just because I don't rate the games that they were brought to, I don't think they're as awe-inspiring. It's not their fault that Goldeneye wasn't the first shooter they played. It's not their fault that Final Fantasy VIII was the first Final Fantasy they encountered. As far as they're concerned, they're the greatest games ever. Which is why when I meet people who are even older than me, not many of them, but a few, <laughs> they point out that things like Hunt the Wampus is the greatest game ever, and that I'm a moron for not understanding that. So... 
My golden age is based around um, the wet and windy uh, culture that I had up in Lancashire. So the Spectrum and the Commodore, it doesn't matter, kids. They're useless pieces of junk that you wouldn't understand and you wouldn't care about. Triangle, squares, dots, rubbish. You're much better off now. And I played that and I thought they were great. And then I bore people rigid about them all the time. What was your first game? My first ever, ever game that I ever played? It was an arcade game in Blackpool. I believe it was Shootout, where the two cowboys go up and down the screen. Oh my gosh, the Atari game. Well, when was it was in, it when it was in an time, arcade yeah. back, then, back then. Pong. Pong, wow, that is truly old school. Very, I'm old. I've never school. liked games that are, that are named after smells. Yeah, because my mom was like, Pong, just, that just is an odd name. just a basic rule I have. Defender, I thought, was really good. Never mind that. Let's not, let's not roll over old games. They're rubbish. New games are much better. <laughs> well, you know.